We are officially live! Awesome! Welcome to Open Studio Hours. My name is Emmy Klein. I am the resident artist here at Jerry's Art Rama. Uh, I'm also the host of Jerry's Live. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, Jerry's Live is kind of the uh, class situation where I have kind of a theme where we teach different various uh, materials or techniques. Uh, and there's a very specific theme with each class. Now, this one, uh, I'm essentially just doing my daily job where I'm going to be actually painting uh, on this is the new edge canvas that's going to be coming out. I am so excited for the size. It is amazing. I'm so stoked. But uh, this is part of my daily job. So I'm going to be working on this and you guys can ask me whatever, anything art related or just say, hey, uh, I'm going to get my chat going over here so you guys can actually talk to me live. And if you have any questions or comments about what I'm doing, or if you're working on a different project and you kind of want some advice or, you know, whatever it may be, feel free to toss it in the uh, chat and I will make sure to answer your questions. Um, let me get this going. There it is. Awesome. Let me also make sure my volume is down. There it is. There it is. All right. Uh, so just to kind of catch you up on what I've done so far with this, because I know you guys usually ask. <laughs> um, this is just a universal prime canvas, so it's great for, you know, acrylics or oils. I'm currently working in oils. I'm using the Lucas 1862 uh, Professional Oils. I have started with one color and only one color. I have not used anything else on here. This is, um, <laughs> Katie and I were talking about this. It's either Castle Earth or Castell Earth. I've seen it pronounced both ways. I don't know which one's right. Please don't come at me, but uh, that's the only color I've been using here. And then I've also thinned it down with the lavender spike oil uh, to get a nice thin wash. I toned the whole thing and then I sketched in this drawing of my still life. Uh, that you That's the picture you guys are actually seeing here. I have a still life set up over here uh, so you guys can actually see what I see and that's what I'm painting. Um, but uh, that is the fun still life that I set up. Uh, just a bunch of dishes from Goodwill uh, or the, I think it was a, just a thrift store specifically. Uh, it wasn't actually Goodwill, but um, yeah, I just uh, grabbed a bunch of them and stacked them up to where they look like they're about to fall over. So I'm very excited about this painting. I've been kind of wanting to do this for a while because I love the idea of it. It's very uh, kind of Alice in Wonderland-ish. Uh, makes me happy. So the fact that I get to make a painting for work, it's, I love my job. My job is awesome. So. Devandi Studios said that's a dishwasher's nightmare. <laughs> I used to be a dishwasher, by the way. Uh, I totally understand that and I agree. Uh, that is absolutely a dishwasher's nightmare. But yeah, I used to be a dishwasher in a pizzeria back when I was in high school. But it is. It is absolutely a dishwasher nightmare. Hey, and can you go over what is on your palette? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, so I just uh, pulled out a couple of colors that I thought I would be using in here because as you can see in the photo here, sorry, I'm trying to make sure I can point at the nothingness in the air. <laughs> um, I it's it's all white dishes, so. Oh yeah, you guys can actually. Well, you guys will get a different viewpoint. The, the picture you're seeing is my viewpoint, but you guys can actually see what I have in front of me. So um, I actually am looking at a real life object. Um, and in case uh, Devandi Studios, if you're wondering, I epoxied all of those together. They are not gonna fall over. Uh, but I did that on purpose because I wanted it to look like it was about to, um, and I didn't want it to move on me. Uh, but, they're all white dishes. And in order to paint white on white on white, you have to look for those colors. And I don't have any black or uh, gray on my palette here for specifically that reason. Uh, this is actually something that I did in college that was really fun. We had an all white still life and we had to paint. It was a white tablecloth with white objects. Everything was white and you had to paint an all white still life and you weren't allowed to use black, which was very difficult. <laughs> Uh, but it helps you kind of figure out and see your colors. So that's why you can see right here, this is the Castle Earth that I have on my palette. 
um, the one that I started off with. It's really kind of a purpley kind of neutral tone. Uh, so that's like my neutral kind of base brown kind of tone, I guess. Then I have a uh, titanium white here in the corner. Then I have a lemon yellow. Oh geez, what is that orange? This orange is Indian yellow. Uh, this right here is permanent red. Then I believe that is a cobalt violet. Yeah, cobalt violet. I'm trying to make sure I talk at the camera so you guys can hear me too. <laughs> and then I have a cobalt blue. And then I believe that is, the green is the chromium oxide green. So uh, that's the, the main colors that I have up here. Now this little one that I sneaked in uh, in the corner is actually the one of the newer colors for Lucas 1862. It's the ice blue. And I know I'm gonna see a lot of that color in these white cups. So instead of going straight for my titanium white, I'm going to go for that ice blue and that's how I'm gonna get that like kind of bright white look without having to sacrifice the pure white for my highlights because I will put those in at the very end. So, all right, let's see, make sure I didn't miss anything. And I do apologize, you guys are gonna see my back a lot because I'm gonna be painting, uh, but that's why we pulled in Amanda so she can make sure I won't miss any of your questions because it's kind of a weird painting here, questions are here. But Amanda's got me. She's the bestest. I got you, boo. <laughs> All right, so I just kind of uh, just recently uh, darkened up my background here just to kind of push that back and kind of pull my uh, cups forward. But I'm getting ready to just add in some color. But I do have to make sure, especially with a painting this big, I have to step back, which is why we're going to get real close. <laughs> Um, just so I can really see kind of the whole thing and judge what's going on here. All right, so let's let's start with some purple because that's gonna be more of my shadow colors. It's kind of that that cobalt violet, but I don't want it to be a straight purple. So I am gonna mix in a little bit of that castle earth to tone it down a little bit. an interesting Paulo Paulo's on hey what's going on thanks for joining all right so I'm going to be tossing in those shadows that I see and also if you guys are interested in painting kind of a similar uh, image of what I'm doing um, I can always post the image of this onto our Jerry's live Facebook group uh, just so you guys can see it, I know a bunch of you that are watching are already part of that group, but if you want to join, anybody can. You do have to just answer that one security question. So. Oh, it scares you. It is never actually all white. No, you are absolutely correct. There are a lot of colors in there. You just have to look for them. But it's fun. It's a fun kind of a reminder of looking for colors and things like that. What's what's the term? The It's not a fun project, it's a fun exercise. Words. <laughs> exercise. shadow that comes across. Now, not only is this all, an all white, still life is also glass. All of them are glass. So I am getting reflections of things that are around me. Um, so I can see, like you guys can't see it, but I have a shelf over here, um, over here. And I can see the reflection of that in the side of the, the cups. Uh, so I know what I'm looking at, but you guys do not. <laughs> Amy, what do you think is more of a challenge for you personally, all white or all black? I don't use black in my uh, 
paintings. Ooh, I feel a show coming on. <laughs> if anybody wants to see that as a Jerry's Live show. But you just show, said white is not all white. No, that's true. And black objects are not black mm -hmm. for the most part. Like this uh, tablecloth, I would not, I, I don't have black on my palette. I would use my darker pigments to represent that, but I would not actually use black. So I feel like we have to, that's going to be a fun show. We would have to maybe do that. I like that idea. Anybody who wants to see that, put it in the comments. <laughs> now this weird cup at the top has like a funky scalloped edge, which I'm going to more or less kind of ignore right now. I'll get to that later. For right now, I'm just doing big general shadows, trying to find my form. probably need a bigger brush, which I am going to actually switch over. Uh, and just so you guys know, the brushes I am using, they're all Mimic Hog, um, which is a really nice uh, bristle for oil painting. I like them a lot, uh, but they have a nice snap to them. I try not to touch this because I did use this earlier to tell my canvas, <laughs> and it's got some icky on there. Uh, but that's the brushes I'm using. They're in all various sizes, so in case you were wondering. And all dark. Make sure. Uh, all right. There's a bit of. Oop. I need more. More of that violet and castle earth color. All right. Now it's just subtle. Just along this edge. That is mostly just pulling off my original pigment. So as you can see, I started removing what was already there. It started getting lighter. That's because I have not enough pigment on my brush and I have too much solvent on there. So I usually, you know, this is the beginning stages. I'm working very lean because it is an oil painting. So I'm mixing in my, um, my spike oil, the Chelsea Classical Studio spike oil, just to bring that fatty content of my oils down. Cause you want to start on a very lean layer. Uh, then as you go on, you want to build up those fatty layers. Alright, so let's try that again. There we go. Trying to darken it, not lighten it. Ooh, and I actually totally forgot um, on this cup right here, there's a handle right in the middle. If you guys can see that on the, the picture. I didn't even put that in. Whoops. Let's uh, quickly sketch that in. All right. Kind of gets a little wider down here because it's the form of the mug handle kind of coming in. I'm going to probably exaggerate it a little bit. Alright. Alright. That sort of works. Because I can see right there is a shadow. You mix your blacks. Yeah, no, I've actually, uh, am a huge fan of mixing my blacks as well. Um, just because it's a habit I got into from college, uh, using black on your palette is not wrong. Uh, black is a wonderful tool to have on your palette. Um, but when, especially when you're beginning, it's one of those things that you... Sorry. <laughs> uh, I got too many things over here. She, uh, Katie's got like 15 electronics over there, so I'm surprised that seven of them have not gone off yet. <laughs> There's literally six screens in front of you right now. <laughs> but, um, okay, so I was saying, uh, using, when you're a beginner and you're just starting to try to figure out color theory and color in your paintings like this, uh, a lot of teachers will have you take black out of your palette entirely so you can get used to using those darker pigments like violet or like the castle earth on my uh, palette right now 
those are really dark pigments. If I put them on uh, very thickly, it will appear black compared to all of the other colors. So it's not that it's a wrong color to use, it's just that I personally don't. And like you were saying, Devandi Studio, I believe your name is Derek. I'm pretty sure Frida told me that. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But uh, I'm gonna call you Derek because <laughs> that's what we're gonna do now. Um, but uh, mixing your blacks is a uh, tool that I use all the time. I really like to mix uh, burnt sienna and like an ultramarine blue. You can vary the blues, you can also vary the browns that you mix in, but I like that oranginess of the burnt sienna and the, the cool, or like the, um, that warm kind of tone of the ultramarine blue, the way that they kind of mix together and they give you a really fun, uh, it's, oh, what's the, the term is a, um, it's like chromatic a vision. Black. Chromatic black. That's it. Thank you, Katie. Katie for the win. <laughs> All right, let's get to painting. Oh, I'm going to forget what I'm doing. All right, so this whole side is in shadow for the most part on all of these. It's funny as I can see the reflection of these cups in the cups. There's like a little edge right here Half where I can see, yeah, I can see the reflection of this cup reflecting onto this cup. Cupception! Sounds weird. And then my... Darkest part of this shadow is kind of right about here. Remember, your shadows aren't the darkest on the edge. Your, uh, the core of your shadow is going to be kind of in a little bit. You're going to have some reflection coming in. Although there is another reflection of something coming in right here. Ooh. There we go. Oh, wait, no. This is why I have to do this. And look. There it is. That's what I meant to do. <laughs> Kind of the same thing over here. There's something reflecting right here. But this reflection is... Which cup am I painting? I'm going to lose track of which one I am painting. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to judge. There's a lot of cups happening. <laughs> but then I also have the shadow of this handle kind of coming down. real dark right here and then this has like a line down the middle so this part of that handle is kind of curving down where this one's curving that way and the lights coming in this way so it's gonna be darker on that side but then it also starts wrapping down so if that wasn't confusing enough that sort of works And I guarantee you guys, I am not going to finish this in the time that I have today. So. Ah, <laughs> oh, you guys are talking about orange. Ah, Maria! Thank you. The still life, um, it is, it's something, like I said, I, I've been wanting to do this for a while because it's kind of just been rattling around in my head. Uh, I can also post the picture of this still life for you guys, uh, like I said, in the, the Jerry's Live Facebook group if you want to paint it. So uh, Christina actually took a really nice high resolution photo of it, uh, and I can post it for you guys. In the chat we're trying to figure out what a compliment to the ice blue would be, because you seem to have a compliment to each of them. 
it would have to be orange because the opposite like, like a peachy pastel orange i feel like yeah like a salmon mm -hmm. would be a good one although because that kind of leans into more the yellow realm eh, like the pinky well pinky reddish orange um not the yellow i'm sorry i'm thinking of red it leans more towards red so if this ice blue was more green then yes, I'd say so, but it definitely is blue, so the opposite of blue on the color wheel is orange. So you definitely need something in the orange realm. If it does lean more towards that red, you're going to get more of those pink kind of tinges that affect it as well. And actually, you know what? Since I am here... Let's do, all right, that is a dirty brush. Wow, gonna have to yell at whoever used that brush last. <laughs> Let's get a clean brush, there we go. Right, there's that ice blue. It is a really, really bright, bright blue. so crazy like I just barely touched this cadmium orange now remember cadmium orange is insanely pigmented so I don't want to use a whole lot of it um, but I just touched like the little the little tip of that like blob that I put on is that cadmium orange or did you say that was Indian yellow? oh I'm sorry that is an Indian yellow this is I lose track of things <laughs> this is again Amanda for the win alright so that kind of made it look green because it probably does lean more towards the yellow side of the uh, the orange. So let's add a little bit of that red. And there you go, a nice neutral gray because it has a lot of that white in there. So that's why it would give you a neutral tone but it's still gonna be on the higher side of the value uh, because it's gonna be so bright. But there you go. And I can actually use this in my painting. So, like, I'd probably put it over here. I do need a little bit of spike oil, though. like that right and there's that little bit of shadow that's in there and this is the reflection right and then if I need to go back in with a highlight, like on the top of that, um, the rim of that, I probably would honestly use for the top right here, um, a very lovely kind of uh, ivory yellow. Like I would not use pure white still on the rim because the highlights are like right here and on the tip of that handle. And it's, you can see them kind of bouncing around, but I would put them in very select few places just to kind of move your eye around the canvas. But I still would, touch this with a bright uh, kind of a creamy it would be like beige <laughs> yellow uh, like the lemon yellow with titanium white would be a great color but I'm going to have to keep this it would also be on that rim Somewhere here. This seems like a really fun transition color from like the really bright highlights to like the shadows. This would be a good color. So I am going to continue on though with my shadows because I'm not quite done with that. You guys are. You guys are still debating, I love it. All right, so 
This one. Ooh, that's really dark. Get a little bit less. Handles are so funky. What is happening in there? That's just really dark. Come on. Let me keep that over off to the side. Uh, that's the other thing that's really good to know for uh, beginners. Uh, have your dark brushes separate from your light brushes. Or if it works better for you, uh, have a cool brush and a warm brush. So any of like your reds and those kind of colors, that, especially with an all white painting just to keep them from getting muddy. Uh, any of like your yellows and your oranges, keep that on one brush, and then any of your blues and like cooler colors, keep it on another brush. Um, but that's why I don't wanna, since I had that really bright color on that brush, I don't wanna really mix it in with this because it will tint those colors. But, oh, that's what I was doing. That's what I was doing. Um, this turns a little bit further in. Uh, Derek wants to know how you do your reflections. How do I do? They my have such a hard time with them. Like how do you do? How do you? What's your process for reflections? Um, exactly kind of what you're seeing. Like you can see, I'm I'm really chunking in big shapes right now. So I know this whole side of the cup plate craziness is in shadow. Uh, if I can see the reflection of like that cup right there, I left it, but I am going to still darken it because it is darker than this side of the cup. But I can see that there's a definite change in color. Uh, but if you, yeah, if you really break it down, especially with glass, uh, that's, the key is to not go, oh, that's a reflection of whatever it is. Break it down into basic shapes and basic colors. So if it's in shadow, it's gonna stay to those cooler colors. You might see reds and oranges kind of in them, but they are gonna still have that coolness to it. Um, but if it's on the highlight side uh, over here, like I can see that there's definitely a reflection on this cup, that's gonna be nice and bright, but it's still gonna be in that warmer tone because it's on this side of the cup in the lights. Um, but yeah, that's just the best thing I can do is say, take a look at what you're doing and break it down into very basic shapes. I don't, I don't know if that really helps. <laughs> Hope it does. All right. <laughs> All right, so this handle being super funky. It's a very funny shape right there, which is quite fun. It's funny is, that's the other thing is, cause I'm working from life, if I shift, because I am a very shifty kind of person. <laughs> um, just in general, if, if I shift, that is gonna change the angle of what I see things at, which is why um, I'm gonna give you guys the photo so you don't have to worry about that. But if you are working from life, uh, especially when you're doing the initial drawing, make sure you are planted, because if you shift around, it's gonna be like, <sighs> started drawing this side of the cup from here and then down here I'm standing over here and it's going to look really wonky. Um, what I did, just so you guys know, is I actually did take a photo of this and um, because this is one of my go-tos because I have to work through things so quickly for the job uh, and I have to paint fast and get things done because we have deadlines here. Um, 
I took a photo of this and I took a photo of the canvas and I adjusted it to where my canvas was flat and it was perfectly 18 by 48, which is what this is. And then I layered the image on top of that and made sure to place it wherever I wanted. And then I kind of made the photo of the cups transparent and then I could see my wash through it. So I could kind of use that as almost like a grid method and well, more like a doodle grid method because it was very messy. Um, but that's how I got the drawing laid down on here first. So I didn't actually draw this from life just because I don't have time. I could, I just don't have time for that because I'm, this is for my job. Um, but for you guys, just keep in mind if you are painting from life, stationary. <laughs> Right here, you can see where I got a little light there. Uh, the reason why is because the light is hitting that the top of this handle and reflecting back at that. So it is lighter, but I am going to still darken it because I can always lighten it up later with a little bit of like titanium white. But again, like uh, Derek, what you were uh, talking about, that right there, I would still keep it in that cool kind of area, but it definitely is getting hit with a lot of light. There's also a line going through there, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. All right. I better move down. All right, I am still keeping my wash really, really light right now, because I'm still just finding this form, but I'm gonna have to start moving down this canvas or else I'm never gonna get there. I might actually sit because this is, I can't move the canvas for you guys, um, but this is gonna hurt my knees. I am not a spring chicken. Is this still behind you? I know, that's why I put it there. You're gonna be so tiny, but. I'm gonna be in the, just, just the top of my head. That's all you guys are gonna see. I did. Oh well, we're gonna roll with it. Yeah, you can see I touched it right there. Whoops! It's fine. It's fine. This is fine. Actually, I'm gonna use this smaller brush. that. Okay, back to big brush. Ooh, there's a lot of purple in that corner of that brush. My bad. So I can see there's some kind of a weird shadow shape right here. And there's another one. I'm guessing that's probably these bowls and the bowls and the um, kind of cups that are still going down. It's real funky. I can always lighten this too. You know? Go back to eventually. I know. I mean, I could leave it like that, but <laughs> it would not be, it would not be uh, white cups or bowls and plates, cups and bowls and plates. All right, 
this area. All right, yeah, my little, I'm gonna need to pull the stool over cause I'm gonna not squat. <laughs> I'm so little on the camera, that's great. Uh, although that makes it a problem because I'm no longer seeing this at the right angle. Dang it. So I can't do that. Remember, it's changing my angle of... It's alright. We're gonna get our squats in, guys. <laughs> no worries. The color of your canvas is very close to the ends of your hair. It's accurate. Okay. Yeah, it is. Clearly, I like this color. <laughs> It's a purpley red. <laughs> so essentially, I am Lucas Castle Earth plus the cobalt violet. This. Describe me in a color. That actually angles that way. There's another facet to this bowl. So, this bowl that I'm painting right here, the top of it's perfectly round, but then it gets cut into like these weird straight facets, which is so fun, but so confusing. <laughs> I forgot the bottom of that. I think that makes sense, right? So remember, since the light's coming in over here, the corners of everything, because they're sitting inside of each other, the corners on the bottom side that's going in is going to be in shadow. So it looks like it's actually going into the space of the, the one underneath it. Which is very fun to play with, because then you have to figure out how to make that look like it's in shadow, but it's not as dark as that area. And then it gets real bright right here, but then you have to transition between the two of them. <laughs> Hold that vision in time, squat, paint. Yes, visualize, squat, paint. That's gonna be my new mantra. I need it on a t-shirt. <laughs> it's like an art aerobics class. <laughs> Do 30 sets. That's right. You take a look, you squat, you paint. Oh God, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I am not, so we just do not, one not in shape, okay. <laughs> we, just do, we just do one, that's it. All right. Ming, do you want to say hello to the world? It's Ben. Oh, that's Ben. I thought it was Ming. You sounded like Ming. Office buddies. I did not draw the end of that bowl. Say it goes right there. 
that's going to be all in shadow. <laughs> I like how you're laughing at my squat issues. Inability to squat. definitely a shadow and it stops right there I think what are you saying Katie are you laughing about me matching my canvas again yeah but then your like rainbow matches your rainbow on the palette okay clearly there are things that I like It was all unintentional. I regret nothing. <laughs> There's coffee in that nebula. Nice. I asked if they were coffee people or tea people. Ooh. Because I myself am coffee people. Can I uh, just blow your mind and say I am both? I am southern sweet tea people. I see like I just had um, the other day for breakfast well like not instead of like drinking coffee with my breakfast I had um, matcha and I just felt like matcha although that recipe did not work out Amanda you and I were talking about that earlier it was thick, thick. <laughs> with two C's yeah all right, this is gonna be the visualize and squat thing. Ooh. <laughs> All right, I did it, I'm proud. Uh, Cameron wants to know how long your under paintings typically take. That honestly depends. Um, this being so big, it's going to take me a lot longer to do the underpainting just because I'm like right now I'm still considering this kind of my underpainting uh, because I'm really just finding form. I'm not actually painting the colors or anything that I'm seeing there. I'm just trying to find the shadows and the shapes and the actual forms of this. Um, when it comes to portraiture, that can take me a lot longer than still life, but this is such a big and complicated still life that's why it's gonna take me longer uh, the simpler kind of a thing that it is like if I was like painting that cake I got a whole painting done in within an hour um, there's no way I'm gonna get this done uh, and it just it depends on the scale and um, whether or not I give up on my underpainting halfway through and just start painting painting because <laughs> I have done that before too I do underpaintings until it feels right that, does that work? And then Cameron also wanted to know, do you use any mixing mediums like liquid or traditional medium? What's your favorite? Um, if I use like what? Mixing mediums. With oil paints? Mm -hmm. right, and you said like? You said like uh, liquid or traditional medium? Like liquid? Liquid. Liquid. Okay. Because I was going to say, I've used liquid before um, and that is very similar to how I use the spike oil. Uh, and it does dry your oils much faster, which is really nice. Uh, and you can kind of do the underpainting in a day, let it dry, come back in a day, maybe two, and it's pretty dry, uh, especially if you work as thin as I do. And then um, I've also used the Lucas Pasto, or the, the painting butter, which is really fun. Uh, and that's an impasto kind of filler for your oil paints, but um, it's... Also, I believe dries faster, but it holds its shape. So you can do impasto painting and it dries fairly quickly without losing any of that structure, which is really cool. Um, but for an everyday painting like this, I use the Chelsea Classical Studio, um, the, the spike oil for the most part. If I get to a point where, cause you have to do the fat over lean method. Um, so if I, start this and I get my basic drawing down my underpainting and it's very thin because I've used the spike oil to bring that uh, oil content down 
Um, then I go in and I start using a little bit more oil paints to build up my next layers. And then on top of that, I would then go in with just straight paint instead of using any of the spike oil. So it's at that like that fatty content. Now, if I wanted to, I could also use the lean medium in between the spike oil and getting to just straight paint. Um, so it kind of keeps your layers lean, but it allows you to have kind of a step in between, which is cool. So it goes spike oil, lean medium, then straight paint. Now, if you are still not quite done with your painting and you still wanna keep going, you can either add in linseed oil or you can also add in the Chelsea Classical Studio has a, um, a fat medium, which is so much fun. Uh, I believe the linseed oil would be the step before the fat medium. The fat medium is, Katie, correct me if I'm wrong, linseed oil and Damar varnish. Kind of a combination. So that, that would be something that you would probably want to keep in the very top layers of your painting just because Damar varnish in general if you're mixing that into your oil paints it gets a hard kind of layer to it and it doesn't really let things kind of adhere to it very well so you wouldn't want to continue to paint layers and layers on top of that does that make sense Katie's looking into the fat medium yeah. <laughs> I can't remember it's... I know the lean medium is linseed and Spike oil. Mm -hmm. so that would and be I believe the fat spin. medium is linseed and Damar varnish. No, I believe the only place you can find that information is on the Chelsea Classical Studio website. That's not the one. Yeah. Well, no, Katie's the, the Oracle. Um, she'll, she'll find it. The linseed. <laughs> I have referenced that page many a times. As a follow up, Cameron was wondering if you could, if you knew about what percentage of time you spend on each. The underpainting. I try to fly through the underpainting as quickly as possible because it's not my favorite. Like it's it's fun for me because I get to find that like where things are on my canvas. I get to find the form and I get to like really kind of explore what it is that I'm painting. Um, but for me, the part that I just truly truly love is color. I live for color. I have a just a romantic obsession with color. <laughs> so I try to burn through my uh, the underpainting as quickly as possible to get to the coloring stage, if that makes sense. Um, I, I, I don't know if it really breaks down to a, a percentage. I don't do math well. <laughs> don't hold that against me. But yeah, no. The fat medium is a mixture of linseed oil, lavender spike oil, essence, and Namar resin. It wasn't too far off. There is spike oil in there. But uh, yeah, the. Well, I was wondering how they were gonna keep the Damar varnish, the Damar varnish from eating, hardening, hardening. Yeah. Was well, that a like shiny, crystally? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. Shellacy layer. Yeah, that and that's what that's shellac. What the, shellac is a great word yeah. to describe Damar varnish, um, and so because it is inside that medium, the fat medium. Uh, that's why you want to keep it on those top top yeah. layers because you can varnish on top of it no problem but if you want to continue to paint with additional layers on top of that it that just works. doesn't want anything to yeah. stick to it which is why it makes a great varnish yeah. um, but that's why that fat medium is like the last thing I would use if I am using still more layers and more layers to be completely honest I get to the underpainting stage with the linseed or I'm sorry the spike oil and then I Usually, on occasion, we'll grab a lean medium just to have some more steps in between. But for the most part, I just use the spike oil and then go straight into the layer of having just straight paint on my canvas. And by the time I get to that, I am done. Um, I paint quickly, though. So, this <laughs> kitty's shaking her head. <laughs> That's for the most I like. part, I should say. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, when it comes to very complicated things like this, I probably don't paint as quickly. But I still painting. paint. Yeah, talking and painting also slows me down a little bit. <laughs> but I do paint relatively quick. But that's just because I've been painting for so long and so often. Um, I am a very lucky lady. And yes, this is how tall this painting is. I mean, it's, it's only here, but like... 
I what can is tell. It officially, twenty four by. It is uh, this. Sixty. This right here is eighteen by twenty four, and the reason why I'm doing this it's painting. Not 24. 24. Is it uh, I'm sorry, eighteen by forty eight. <laughs> you said twenty four. It's throwing me off. I'm sorry. Um, the reason why I'm doing this painting is because this is a it's new size of canvas that we're getting in soon. I cannot wait because I just want to have like a series of these. Katie knows how well I am about finishing my series though. <laughs> Which is not very well at all. Let's just say um, this new, these new sizes of this canvas have inspired many a painting so far. Yes, I have like 16 new paintings that I want to do. This is one of them. Um, but the reason why I'm not making this a, a series for my job is because of how like all the other ones that I want to do. <laughs> um, but that's why I'm doing this painting because we need artwork for uh, advertising this size of canvas. Just really fun new sizes. Yeah. We've only got about 10 minutes left. Holy moly. I know, time really? flies. Time flies when you're painting. All right. Well, you know what? Let's, I'm going to stop doing the underpainting layer and just jump in. So I'm going to take the titanium di or titanium <laughs> white, I almost said titanium dioxide. Wow. There's you're what, like 5'9"? What? Ah, you said you're what, like 5'9"? Five 5'9"? Nine? <laughs> five nine? Who? <laughs> Who oh, no, 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 I am not 5'9". How little. The running joke is we have to lower everything for Emmy. Uh, I'm big girl sized. I swear. I'm a grown up. No, I am, I'm short. I'm very short, which is why I'm very happy that Heather is also short because with the Jerry's Live, uh, if you, that's kind of the, the funny thing is that when you're filming with two people, you want to bring them to the same level. So usually I have to stand on a box, but well, Heather, I don't. Well, because I'm taller than you, so. Yeah, you oh, are. I said five nine, I said, oh. Yeah. yeah Maybe you and I never don't work well together. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> I come up to Katie's yeah, chest. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, it's not great. We run the gamut in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> Five nine. That's that is fantastic, though. Thank you. sure what I'm painting right now is the reflection of the wall. <laughs> oh, I said I'm also keychain size. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna start calling Emmy. Yay. Oh, Halloween. Yeah, you guys you. literally Let's... just gave them the new nickname for me. I am now keychain size. <laughs> Because uh, I have a brother who is six foot three. He's a full, literally a full foot taller than I am. I am five three. He took it all. He did. He took all of the height. I took all of the talent. Oh. Which is honestly, those are his words, not mine. <laughs> I did not say that. That's okay. He is talented in other ways that I am not. like athletic stuff. That's my brother is very athletic. I am not. I'm sorry. Don't. Don't apologize for the keychain size. It's kind of awesome. It's adorable. Mm. I feel like we can make you a really cool Halloween costume, right? In which you are a keychain. I can be a keychain for Halloween. I'll be the key. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have to hang off on Katie's like. <laughs> I'll just I'll just hang on to you like a ch like I'm a child. Like a kid leash. <laughs> Sometimes they need it for that. Lord.
focus because I'm running out of time here. Yeah, you're about five minutes. Much. Mm -hmm. It really does not, um, like, this is why I normally rush the underpainting part, and I'm like, but I can just get to this part, and I'm like, ah. makes me very happy. That's literally what I do as I am painting, I'm like, ah. <laughs> I feel like you guys get a good sense of me on the Jerry's Live, like, show, but this show, it's really, <laughs> it's just me. You're just like a human cartoon character. It's so great. <laughs> oh, man. A keychain-sized one. A keychain-sized character. That's great. did I get, was I standing way back? I was. When I was originally working on this, I was standing way back here. <laughs> this is why when I said like when you guys do your initial drawing, either use a photo of your reference or stay put because it's really hard to just keep that same angle. over there and I have one in my office. There's only one over there right now. There's two. There's one uh, right behind it. I know where all the sets are. Oh, I see it. came back. <laughs> yeah. I know where the supplies in this place are. Mostly because I have to keep track of everything. <laughs> Me into a keychain? No. <laughs> like an actual like keychain of me? You should. We have little Jerry keychains. We can also have any keychains. Little Emmy keychains. That's great. I don't really want to be. I don't think I really want to be a keychain. <laughs> Although, what was it that we, Heather and I were talking about the other day? Um, they were talking about the Saint Remy easel. And someone thought that they said Saint Emmy, and I was like, don't make me a saint, unless it's the saint of cheese. <laughs> this is where, like, Katie is just shaking her head at me, like, no. Alright, it is four. It's four o'clock already, holy moly. It's amazing how fast time can fly. Well... 
clearly talking and painting is hard for me to get through very quickly. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, that was our open studio hour. Now remember, uh, we are going to be doing this the first and third Thursday of every month. Uh, same time, 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you guys want to jump in and watch it next time. Uh, usually I'm going to be on the first Thursday of every month and then Jamie is going to be on the third Thursday of every month unless there's a reason why someone else switches. But for the most part, that's what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to keep working on this and uh, hopefully get it done for work. Uh, and then I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much.